the sea in Kumasi. Then I saw you talking about uh, one in Techiman too. Mm -hmm. What's this whole thing about taking sea to other parts of the country? Well, first of all, I think um, I think when I started this journey, I knew that I was going to become one of the biggest industrialists in history in Africa. And I knew that my opportunity was not to make money. My opportunity was to change economies and build nations and have a template, a blueprint that other countries will benefit from. See, that's where I see myself to be. I see myself to be one of the people to be talked about in the next 500 years. I know people don't like to hear this fact, but that's how confident I am in who I am and what I can do and what I'm capable of doing. So I definitely knew that industrialization would need logistics and logistics would bring a different type of development because it's a change and a shift of infrastructure. I was definitely looking at the waters for a long time. I was definitely looking at the map of the country and checking the waters. Now, I'm going to reveal the secret in, in this interview. The question that you should be asking me is why Kumasi? I chose Kumasi to start the topic of water transportation because the Ashanti region historically is very sensitive about water. Mm. Our first king was warned not to cross the river and when he did he was beheaded and he never came back the head it was also never back okay we tried to claim the cape coast water when we realized that a part of our people were there <laughs> the ashantis who have become infantis slanging the tree but based on regional demarcation we couldn't claim it kwame Nkrumah did the first biggest man-made lake in Ghana or in Africa or maybe one of the biggest in the world yeah. when he got to the Ashanti border it ended there at that time there was no region like Bono region <laughs> it was the Ashanti region you know taking over all of those places he left it there so the water didn't connect when you look at Kumasi it is situated in the middle eastern and western corridor but they can't feed any of these corridors and then Accra and Kumasi are like the competitive cities but one has outshined and outgrown one that's Kumasi why it's because of water so I chose that place to raise the topic and it's very sensitive and that's why it went viral and I know that you know, a lot of uh, the media and people are trying to coin what I'm saying. But the reality is that it's a fact and it's the truth. Canals exist, dredging exists, and the sea connects with river and it opens a country. Yes. So, so I just chose Kumasi to start the topic. Now, go ahead, you understand. Let me know yes, what yes, so that exists. Um, that's not in doubt. Uh, it's in the literature. We've, I mean, people, we've traveled out to other countries and we've seen them. We've also read about how long it took them. We've also read about even the feasibility studies that they did to look at whether this could be done or not. And for many people, their concern really is this canal you talk about. Have you, beyond saying, I will do this, what other things have you done? What other pre-feasibility studies or whatever studies have you conducted to know for instance whether it's achievable or not it is achievable first of all and i would like to rest assure you that you know let's not be like the old slaves who always thought that you can't do anything unless the master comes if the master says it will be done we will say yes if the master says it won't be done then we can't do it no it's very much possible okay one is the investment two is the development three is the architects and the engineers that will construct that and they will study all the maps see the water bodies are already there they exist okay you're dredging to connect them now i'm going to give you this analysis and not just you for those who are listening to me when you can google and check all the highways in europe and all the developed countries when you're driving on highways you don't see buildings and anything on the side of the highways. You either see some sort of fencing and some kind of glass, but the neighborhoods are inside. So you're just driving on the highway. 
and it's three highways on the side. When you come to Africa, all the settlements are right on the roadsides, and the road shrinks and it becomes smaller. And the water bodies are left, and we're either throwing rubbish in it or we don't do anything with it. Go to these same countries that have put the fence. Go and find your water bodies. That's where they start their development from. They connect the water because the water, first of all, controls your climate. The water is the power that would irrigate your agricultural system. It will feed the grounds where you live. And then that's the same water you create the bridges on it. So you can see Brooklyn Bridge, this bridge, that bridge. It's all over water. And it connects other city. It reduces the actual kilometers that you need to go around the country. So it's another source. I saw this in England when I was growing up. It's called the Blackwall Tunnel. And then you go through the tunnel, it's water. But they create tunnel and then you just come on the surface of the earth. When you drive another 10 minutes, you get to Tower Bridge. So, sorry, London Bridge. There's Tower Bridge and there's London Bridge. All of that is the Thames, is water. It connects and it takes you all the way to Trafalgar Square and you start to see development, tourism, all of that. That is the future of Ghana's development. We are going to discover all new developments everywhere we connect the water because it's free lands it hasn't been touched it's all virgin that is one two we're going to start to use it for logistics transportation it gives us the power to connect to africa and to connect to the sea and to be able to now take things to harbors and build inland harbors and all of that so distribution becomes easier and this will stop us from using one single road for articulata petrol tanker, uh, Uber, small car, private car, trotro, van, all of that on one road. And beside it is so many things with people selling yams and this and resettlement. That is chaos. It's That's not how you build a country. So I want Ghanaians to understand that I'm here to build a country. My vision is very clear. It's like 2020. It's COVID and you have to be aware. That's how clear my vision is. I can see that development is going to happen this way because you need to connect your waters. Why do you think your colonial master is hidden that secret from you? But when you go to his country, he's connected all his waters. He calls them Thames, canals, ferry, village, this, and secretly he's transporting things on there. Okay. J just by way of clarification, because in Kumasi we're talking about sea, uh, is, it, uh, is it a canal you want? Or is the sea you're talking about? Well, if you drill and connect a sea to any river, the name for it, which will be a jargon in construction and development, will be canal. So it's a canal we're yes. talking about. Canal. Yes. Now, canal can have any sort of river, lagoon, sea, whatever that it is. And look, when you go to Ada, Ada, the water in Ada shares border right with the sea. Right there. The opportunity is we could have created a harbor there if there was already industrialization in those okay. areas. So just a way of another clarif clarification. You say this is something you intend to do. You say the engineers, the architects will do it. Um, do I get the point that it's just a thought you have? It's not a thought. It's, it's just something you want to do. But it's something that has not gone through the processes now. No, I mean, you guys make it look like it's unaffordable, it's unamidable, it's it's unacceptable, and it cannot be done. It's a long time. Listen, thing, no, it? it's not. Actually, I'll tell you. Look, a vision without action is a mere dream. You and the dreamer, there's no difference. That's what a visionary, if you have vision and you can't find a way to activate the vision, if you don't apply action, it's useless vision. It can't be done. Okay? Mm -hmm. Once you decide to do it, it gets done now why do i have the confidence to say so because i've done things i have raised the first 16 floor building in a place where they started building one floor two floors one floor two floors i came and i went shoop, and i put two floors underneath it on one and half plot i put 108 apartments well you know what i actually used some portuguese and some italian engineers and everything you know it was first it was a dream then it became a vision then it became a reality so it's not like I am talking out of my mouth without facts and it's not like I'm willing to do something out of my strength without experience. I have had the two 
I have done things that I know this looks bigger and it is bigger. But once you have tested and realized that it's possible, doing it is no more a problem. The question that I'm asking myself is that there might be someone who is a minister for natural resources and, and blah, 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 and lands. But maybe that person having actually put together architects, engineers, and people to create something of his own to see the experience, the feasibility, the possibility of doing that. I have. So I know that it's possible. And it's not like I'm also just saying it. I've studied it. I looked at River Oti and River Pra. River Pra goes straight into the Cape Coast water. And it's right in Kumasi. It's never been connected. Okay? I looked at the Vota Lake. The Vota Lake goes all the way to all the BA borders. The Bunu region all of that is connected to Kumasi. I looked at River Tano and I only studied River Tano when I was doing the tour because I saw the plywood and I realized that Sefi we also had a lot of cocoa. But I was thinking, how are they transporting this? Then I realized that the River Tano is there. The River Tano goes all the way to the border of Ivory Coast. It actually shares border with the sea. So it's just a matter of dredging these things. Ghana needs to be connected with water. And I know that, you know, I am sharing a lot of my vision on, on media platforms and some of them are conniving because some of them are in the pockets of other politicians and all of that. But I know that people are doubting this. People are thinking it's impossible and this and that. That is just because they've been um, diffused by whatever political promises. This is purposes, is a reality, is a vision, is very much possible. And we haven't done it. There's only one leader who started to try and send us a message with water and that was Kwame Nkrumah mm -hmm. by creating the Volta Lake after what did we do with it nothing we never connected it Tamale <coughs> I checked Tamale when I was there the heat I need to connect the water there I'm definitely going to dredge just a little bit more to get this same Volta Lake into Tamale and then we can start transporting goods. We can start doing a lot of things. Immigration, mm. infrastructure, it's all of that. They're very close, all the waters. But your colonial master would never tell you this secret. He would never want you to know. So you need to go back and study how he built his country. Right. So, so, I mean, so this is just, I mean, so this is your vision. This is my vision. And I think that this and is a vision if, that... If, if given the chance, then you start the feasibility studies. No, it's feasibility studies are done when you're ready to do a project. Okay? Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. If given the chance. Yeah. Don't expect do me to go and do feasibility now uh, I, as, so, as no, a civilian to come no, and give it to no, Ghana. I'm saying if given the chance, you do the feasibility. Given the chance, there is no such thing as giving the chance. There's no such thing if as giving present, power. If you're power present. is taken. And I think the youth of Africa are ready to take power.